everybody, and welcome to the Pause for Stitches podcast. My name is Candy, and I want to say welcome to any new viewers who are popping by to check out this podcast, and I want to say welcome back to any of you who are coming back for a second, third, or I suppose anywhere up to 25th time. Yep, this is episode 25. I can scarcely believe that I'm already at 25 episodes. I often wish I could get more episodes out, but it seems like lately I've been averaging about once a month. So that's, that's been working out for me. Um, and I know that a lot of you have millions of other podcasts that you've been enjoying watching. So I don't want to inundate you with extra ones from me either. So hopefully that's working out for all of us. Um, for those of you who are new to the podcast and are wondering where you can find me, you can find me as Pause 4, that's the number 4, Pause 4 Stitches on both Instagram and Ravelry. Also, if you look in Ravelry, you can find that we have a Pause for Stitches podcast group, which is filled with fun and amazing individuals. And we've got some, I'll always have some kinds of stuff going on in there. So go on over and check it out, please. So it seems I am flying solo again. Finally, on the last episode, I was able to coerce Jamie to join me for a little bit. And if you did watch, you saw that, um, you know, we, we learned some interesting things about, I don't know, what some of Jamie's crafty choices would be if given the opportunity to take lots of different classes. So this evening, Jamie is not home. I'm actually home in New Jersey right now. For those of you who are new to the podcast, I'm home in New Jersey and Jamie is at his back to school night, which for those of you, if any of you are educators out there, I'm sure you can relate to um, sort of the anxiety provoking evening that he is probably having. Um, I don't know, I'm not gonna get into this, but now that I am a supervisor in my school district, I no longer have to do a back to school night for parents. I do sometimes do parent um, presentations and meetings and things like that, but um, it's definitely not the same thing by any stretch as um, the importance of meeting your child's teacher. So the crazy thing though, is that I'm about to admit, I'm about, excuse me, to admit that I miss back to school nights. I actually really kind of liked them. I'm not saying I didn't get nervous. Don't get me wrong, but um, there was always something really special about meeting the parents of my students. And, you know, it was always sort of that first opportunity to make a strong, positive connection with the families that I would be spending an entire year working with. So, um, you know, and of course, if you work for several years in uh, the teaching industry, and if you're lucky enough to work in the same school district for many years, you also get uh, to the point where you've got repeating families coming back and that's always exciting too. So anyway, I miss Jamie and I wish he could be with us this evening, but I'm sure he's doing great. Um, our whole, my whole joke with him is probably that, you know, some of the moms are probably hitting on him a little bit, but that's okay. It's all good. Whatever it takes. So I hope he's having a wonderful evening and I will look forward to seeing him. And when he gets home, what will be ready for him, I apologize for my, you know, not that I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. It's not like I select special outfits to put on when I do these podcasts, but I usually look slightly more presentable than this. But tonight, guess what tonight is? It is opening night for the New York Rangers. So I am wearing this awesome t-shirt, which you probably can't see if you could I don't know if you can see, you can tell, but it's the New York Rangers logo, um, kind of created with names of both former and current New York Rangers. My mom actually got these t-shirts for me, Jamie and my brother for Christmas this year. I forget where she found them, but I believe she told me they make wherever she bought it, they make them in all different, um, sports teams. So I thought this was really, really cool. So I decided that I would pick it out, especially for, home game number one for the New York Rangers. So um, all I know is Jamie texted me and made me promise that I would remember to tape the game for him so that he would be able to um, watch when he gets home. So that's probably what I'll do is I'll tape the game and I'll wait for him to get home 
And then even if I'm going to be tired and probably ready for bed and he'll come home wired, maybe we could at least watch a little bit of it together. So that's probably what the rest of my evening will look like. That and something else that I'm about to show you in a little bit, but hold that thought. So anyway, this episode 25 is going to be a little bit of a different episode. Typically, I like to talk about a bunch of things right up front, get them out of the way. Not that that, that sounds terrible. It's not like they're bad things, but, um, you know, I kind of ease my way into the knitting. I'm going to um, start. I do have one thing I want to talk about first that I feel like is important to get out there right up front. And then I'm going to jump right into the knitting and talk about that first so that that way, if there is anybody who's watching the podcast that is not interested in listening to some of the other announcements and things that I have to talk about, by all means, you do not have to feel obligated to stick around. So that is what we're going to do. But as I said, before I share any knitting with you, I do have something very important to talk about. And that is the upcoming Rhinebeck, but even more so than that, the second annual Rhinebeck Tic Tac Photo Challenge. I mentioned it briefly in my last podcast episode that once again, for the second time, by a second time, I mean, I only have been to Rhinebeck once. So last year when I went for the first time, I did a special little thing for the podcast viewers um, that would sort of give people that were both going to Rhinebeck and not going to Rhinebeck the opportunity to have a little fun associated with Rhinebeck, if that makes any sense. So here's how it goes. And this is going to be a little trickier to explain to you this time because last year, what I did was I had already given people the tic-tac-toe board right up front. So you could see what all of the photo, different photo challenges in each box represented. This year I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different to help build up, pump up the excitement about Rhinebeck. So what I am going to do, well, hang on one second. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, let me explain the challenge. The Rhinebeck tic-tac photo challenge is inspired by your kind of tic-tac-toe board. When I was a teacher, I could make a game out of just about anything. So I'm really no different in real life. If there is a way to make anything, cleaning, cooking, whatever, if there's a way to make anything into some sort of a game that makes it fun and sort of motivational, I will do that. So picture a tic-tac-toe board with nine squares, okay? In each of those nine squares, there is going to be sort of a photo prompt, if you will. Um, and what that will mean is that it's an opportunity for those people that are going to Rhinebeck to take photographs um, that have something to do with the Rhinebeck experience. Okay, so for example, one of the ones from last year was take a sheep selfie. So clearly, if you're going to Rhinebeck, you're going to see tons of sheep. You know, you're going to kind of look up with that sheep and do a little clickety-click with the sheep in the background with you, and there you go, sheep selfie. So that's just one example. As you know, the way tic-tac-toe works is that you have to get three in a row to get a tic-tac-toe. So what we did last year is for anybody that got a tic-tac-toe, which meant you took three of the pictures or you responded in, you know, a pictorial manner <laughs> to three of the photo prompts and you posted your pictures in my Ravelry group under the appropriate thread um, that earned you one entry. That is how it will work again. The only thing that I'm going to do differently this time, as I said, is instead of revealing the entire tic-tac-toe board to you this evening, what I'm going to do is beginning nine days before Rhinebeck, because we are getting closer to that mark, my friends beginning nine days before Rhinebeck, every single day I am going to post the updated tic-tac-toe board on Instagram with a, you know, just sort of a little blurb explaining what, uh, what kind of picture you would be inspired to take. Um, I just thought that might be a fun way to kind of pump up everyone's enthusiasm and excitement as we are leading up to Rhinebeck. So that's what I'm going to do. The other good thing about that is that I think last episode, I mentioned that you guys could go ahead and share some additional ideas for possible Rhinebeck photograph ops um, in a thread that I was going to put in my Ravelry group, which I never actually put in my Ravelry group because I am sort of 
a terrible person like that. And it just completely slipped my mind. I never put it there. So you can be certain by the time this episode is live that um, that thread will be open. And I definitely would love any suggestions that anybody has for something they think would be a fun photo opportunity for the Rhineback Tic Tac Photo Challenge board. So that's one option. So option number one is for those of you that are going to Rhineback. And I hope again that checking that Instagram feed and, and checking to see what some of the different photo ops will be will be exciting for you guys as we get closer. However, last year, thanks to some viewers, what was pointed out to me is that it was a little bit disappointing, clearly, for people that were not able to go to Rhineback because they felt, you know, this was a challenge that they weren't able to participate in. So I accepted that challenge by basically just coming up with a second tic-tac-toe board, which would be for those people who cannot attend Rhineback, but I still want them to have some fun. What I loved most about adding that component to this sort of photo challenge was the fact that while I was at Rhineback, I had so much fun shopping for prizes for those of you who were going to participate in the sort of non-Rhineback challenge, um, but I wanted you to have a piece of Rhineback. So I am planning on doing the same thing again this year, trying to sort of procure some prizes and hang on to them and save those particular prizes for the individuals who are participating in the non Rhineback photo challenge. I think I had a much better name than that. It was something like I, it, we did it through the month of November. Actually, I believe I extended it and we called it the, um, I didn't get to go to Rhineback, but I am thankful for challenge. So I'll probably do something similar to that again this year. Now that tic-tac-toe board, again, I'm not showing that to you now, but I am going to drop that tic-tac-toe board on the morning of Rhineback because even if you can't be there, I want you to feel like you're having some fun in spirit. So that's what I love about having these kind of two challenges going on simultaneously is that it gets to, you know, sort of pump up the people who are going to Rhineback, but also get the people who are not going to Rhineback excited to maybe win a little bit of piece of Rhineback that I will bring back for a couple people. I think last year, maybe I drew for two or three prizes. I can't remember, but um, I haven't made any decisions about that yet because I guess it all depends on what goodies I find for you guys. So that is where we are with the Rhineback Tic Tac Photo Challenge. So please, this time I'm not lying, go ahead and head on over to the Pause for Stitches uh, podcast group in Ravelry and check out that thread and go ahead and please feel free to recommend any photo um, ideas that you think would be inspirational for either one of these photo challenges. So that is that. I wanted to make sure I talked about that up front because this may possibly be the last time I get to podcast between now and when I go to Rhineback. So there you have it. So stay tuned via Instagram for more information about that. All right, so let's move on to the knitting. Here we go. So one of the reasons that I don't, you know, I'm sure I will still manage to fill up a good chunk of your time this evening, but one of the reasons that I don't have a ton of knitting to actually talk about is because as I'm sure many of you who are returning viewers might suspect, or you will probably be not surprised at all by this, I have been pretty much all consumed by one project. And that is, of course, my Rhinebeck sweater, which for those of you who haven't seen me, um, who haven't heard me talk about it on the podcast, or ha who have not seen that I've posted about a bazillion pictures on Instagram of the progress of this monstrosity, um, I am working on the Westering Home sweater. And that is designed by Kate Davies, who I am pretty much obsessed with. And when I am done with this sweater, I am right now I'm in between two of her, two other patterns of Kate Davies that I think I would like to cast on as soon as I possibly can because I have enjoyed, this has been by far the most complicated project I think I've worked on ever in my knitting career, if you will, but I have actually enjoyed every second of it. When I started this project, quite frankly, I was really afraid that I was going to get halfway through this thing and I was going to be done with it but I can actually honestly tell you that there has not been one second or one moment 
throughout this project that I have been bored. It really, I mean, and we're talking something that is a big mama number of stitches on this needle. It like the cables go on for days. You know, I really, really had my doubts about this project, but I am absolutely head over heels in love with how it has, I was going to say how it has turned out. I don't want to jinx myself because it's not quite finished, but dear God, am I close. So I have to be honest, this probably is not going to show very well because I have to be super careful in how I'm holding this up because right now this thing is hanging by like two, well, it was hanging by three needles. I think we're down to two now. Um, but I am pretty much on the tail end there. The way Kate Davies has her pattern written, it's numbered and there are sort of 10 steps with, you know, sort of multiple directions within each step. I am on the last of those steps. So I'm really excited about that. Let me show you what's going on here. All right. I think I have this. I tried to, to already carefully put this so that I'd be able to show you what it's looking like. So this is the Western home. Ah, I did it already again. Anyway. That is the top, as you can see, oh my God, I can hold it up. You can see a sleeve there, it's attached. The whole thing is attached. I currently, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, I have a little bit of air conditioning in my sleeves. So that maybe isn't the most attractive look. Obviously I have to graft that together. But where I'm at right now is I'm at the part where I'm working my way around the bottom of the sweater, up the right side, across the neck stitches, right? I guess that's, yeah, that's what you would call them. Um, and then down the left side and then back across the bottom to the center again. So what I can show you, I think fairly carefully is what the edging looks like. And I do still have ends clearly to weave in, but as you can see, that is that little blob. Oh my God. See, look at the ends. Holy cow. But let me show you just a little section of this so you can see it. There is the I cord bind off. Bam. I am really kind of happy with how that has turned out. Um, I was trying to think back to some shawls that I've done. And at first, because at first I think I was telling some of my friends that this was the first time I have done an I cord bind off. I think I might've been lying about that. I, I have a feeling maybe there was a, um, Kirsten Kapoor shawl that I may have done an I cord bind off with, but now I can't be certain. And it really doesn't matter either way. I can tell you one thing. I have never done an I cord bind off that goes on for miles and miles like this bad boy. You can see the whole bottom now there again on the bottom. Oh, that's terrible. The bottom has an I cord bind off. I think that in here, it's a little bit bunchy where the bottom of the, um, the cables lands at the bottom of the sweater. But um, I was talking with some friends and we were thinking that some of that may kind of shape its way out a little bit when I steam. You actually, um, it's recommended that you steam block this, which does make sense to me. So, um, and also too, I'll throw in the usual picture that you've seen multiple times, but as you can tell, this sweater is meant to kind of flare out at the bottom. So that's the other thing that I think will be interesting to me, um, or for me, I should say. I block every I block everything when I finish it. However, I think this is going to be by far the most intentional blocking that I've ever had to do because um, what she actually recommends is that you want to block you want to block the bottom of this sweater far more aggressively than the top, like sort of the torso part. That's meant to be a little bit more fitted and then it's meant to kind of flare out at the bottom. So that's the deal with that. And then of course, you know, as you can see, I, I think I already said this, but I have the sleeves attached and ready to go. So that's what I have left. I already went up the right side. I have to go across. Oh wait, I do have to do tonight when I'm done with this and I'm, when I'm watching the Rangers. I already watched videos last night. But this definitely is a new to me technique. I have never been asked to make an I cord buttonhole before. I actually have to make two of them in the top um, right and left corners of the sweater. So I do have to do that. I have to finish the I cord bind off and then be, oh, and then I do have to do I cord bind off on um, the edging of the sleeves, which that shouldn't take too long. And then that's it. 
then the last thing that I have left for this bad boy is the hunt for the perfect buttons, which by the way, I better start that hunt like tonight because I don't know how long it's going to take me to receive the buttons once I find them. I find that most times when I've ordered things from people on Etsy, it's usually been pretty quick service. So, um, I'm not too, too tremendously concerned, but I really got to get on that maybe tonight or tomorrow with the latest so that, um, if all I have left to do before Ryan back then with maybe like a week or so to spare is to just sew on a couple buttons, then I think I'll be in business. But for those of you going to Ryan back, please say a prayer for me. Well, for anybody, it could, I could care less if you're going to Ryan back or not. That sounded terrible. But what I need you all to say a prayer for me about is that it is not going to be hot as balls like it is today. It It's 85 degrees on October 5th today right now. I am hot up here in my craft room. I have the windows open. It's ridiculous. So I am hoping that this heat is on its way out, perhaps this time for good, because I'm telling you right now, if it is this hot at Rhinebeck, I am still wearing this I am still going to be wearing this. So if you're looking for me at Rhinebeck and it's hot out, I will be the one that's like gasping for air in a corner somewhere and begging Jamie to go get me bottles and bottles of water because I am just that hot wearing this sweater because I will, I'll say it this way, I will not not wear this sweater to Rhinebeck. So Westering Home is almost done. I'm excited too, because in addition to, um, to Rhinebeck, I think I've talked about this before in a few weeks, I will also be going to the knit for fun retreat up in Edmonton, um, taking classes with Ann Budd, Hohi Locatelli, and also Susan B. Anderson. So, um, I suspect that Edmonton is chilly, unlike here, and hopefully maybe even really cold by the time we're going in another few weeks. So I also think Western Home is going to be coming out for a little Canadian adventure with me as well. So that is that. All right. The next thing I wanted to show you guys that I have also made some progress on, I think on the last podcast, I just mentioned it. I don't even think I had cast it on. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty certain I had not. Okay. What I, I think what I had showed you was the picture of this braid and bobble hat by Fiber Trends. Um, and what I had asked you to do was to cover up this woman's beautiful face and put my Jamie's face there instead, because this, my friends, is the hat that I am trying to make, hopefully in time for Jamie to wear to Brian back. As we get closer, I'm a little concerned about that because even though it's just a hat, and I don't mean to say it's just a hat because hats can certainly be complicated projects, but I didn't really... I didn't look closely enough at this hat to really see all the shenanigans that were going on at the same time. I mean, obviously you could tell from the picture, um, there's a fair amount of detail with all the cabling and the, you know, the twists and turns, there's bobbles up there, all, all kinds of good stuff going on, but not necessarily the kind of thing that you can just pick up and, you know, whip it out quickly. So let me show you where I am. And you can be just as concerned as I am. Um, the cool thing about this hat is that it's actually knit in sort of one long section and then it will be grafted together. So if you can picture this at all, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. This would get folded up. All right. This little going to be a little bit hard to hold it for you guys. But the way I have it there that if you could picture what the picture just looked like, that's the bottom and then that part up here with the bobbles is the top of the hat. So once I finish this, once this keeps going, okay, and builds and builds and builds, I think I have 11 repeats of the, um, the patterning to do. Then basically I pick up stitches up here and then I'm pretty much going to be starting to decrease almost immediately. So again, I think once the Rhinebeck sweater is done, I can kind of give my concentration to this and it would be lovely if I could have this done in time for Jamie because as I said in my Instagram post, couples who cable together stay together. So hopefully you will be able to, uh, you know, if you are at Rhyme Back and you're looking for the mulligans, just look for the dorky couple that is in, not, I don't want to say matching cable-y stuff, but 
yarn dress will be in matching cable stuff. Um, this yarn, by the way, though, I did want to mention, I'm actually going to pull this out of the ball band to show you. I probably told you what it was last time, but now that I've really worked with it, I want to mention it again. This is a yarn from um, Ireland, and it's called Studio Donegal. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is it from Kilcar, Kilcar County? I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but I was just looking for like a really cool toasty, tweedy kind of yarn for Jamie. He's a big fan of, of real kind of sturdy, scratchy wool. Um, so this actually really is a beautiful, beautiful wool to work with. Um, it's 100% merino. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's got, you know, really, I think, kind of pretty cool stitch definition, as you can see. Uh, but it also has like the flex of sort of the tweed action going on there. So I do think that he is going to like this hat. And I definitely think that if, again, if you can picture no woman's face there and no tassel, Jamie wants to go tassel this. He doesn't want tassels, people. Um, I mean, this is also coming from the man who has been rocking the bobble hat that I knit a couple years ago now. Was that two Januarys ago now? Something like that. So quite frankly, he probably could even rock the tassel. He could somehow pull it off. I don't know how he does it, but he does. But if the man says no tassel, he's not getting a tassel. So that's where we are with that. That is Rhinebeck project number two. All right. Quick sock update for everybody. This really, and I promise you when I say this should not take long. I don't think it's going to take that long because I'm kind of whipping out things that I've sort of showed you guys before, but I just wanted to catch you up to speed with where I am in the progress. So here we go. Perfect timing for this evening to share this with you guys. And the reason these look poofy on the sock blocker is because Jamie wore them um, already. I, I wanted so badly to have these socks ready for Jamie's birthday these are his 2017, 2018 New York Ranger season socks. Okay. I had talked about last year that I wanted to start a yearly tradition where every year I knit Jamie another pair of socks that maybe will be sort of good luck socks for the next hockey season. Um, what was exciting about these, and by the way, there is a second one finished, but I just didn't feel like, um, by the way, right now I'm basically holding a dirty sock, so that could be why I really didn't feel the need to show you two dirty socks. I'm just going to show you the one. Um, this yarn I had purchased at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival two, June, two Septembers ago um, from a dyer by the name of um, It's a Good Day for a Cupcake. I wish to God that I could remember the name of the colorway, but I don't. So when that happens to me, I usually just rename the colorway for myself. So we are going to call this bad boy, Let's Go Rangers. So anyway, speaking of the Rangers, it was perfect timing while I'm talking about that. Oh, no, I guess I don't really have to take this off. Um, I had the socks ready for Jamie's birthday, which was this past Monday. Some of you who follow me on Instagram may have seen that Jamie basically had the best birthday he's ever had in his life. The New York Rangers were actually in Lake Placid um, doing sort of like a little exhibition practice before the start of the, the official start of the season. Um, and what they did in Lake Placid, so for those of you who are um, – who are hockey people or even just sort of sports fans, Olympics fans in general, I'm sure you're aware that in 1980, there was a pretty miraculous hockey game that took place in Lake Placid during the 1980 Olympics. Um, it was the United States against Russia. Huge, huge, you know, the, the rink is still referred to as the Miracle on Ice rink, or it's um, the Herb Brooks Arena, who was their coach. Big, big deal. So anything hockey related in Lake Placid is a big deal. So when the Rangers say, we want to come to your town and have an exhibition practice and do all sorts of awesome team building activities before we start our 2017-18 season, I can only imagine how honored 
and super psyched the town of Lake Placid was. So much so that they were able to get permission from the New York Rangers to open up uh, one of their practice skates for a couple hours to the public. So it just so happened that this open practice was on Jamie's birthday on Monday. So he put on his Let's Go Ranger socks. We went into town. We got to wait online, and even though we were a little bit nervous that maybe we weren't going, they only could let a limited number of people in because they actually held the practice in what they refer to as the, I think they call it just the practice uh, rink, which is um, smaller. The regular 1980 um, arena is actually what they refer to as internationally sized, I believe, and it's what that means is the rink itself is actually larger than what the NHL hockey players are accustomed to skating on. So they actually wanted to skate on the smaller practice rink, which was cool for us because what that meant is they invited you in enough people. There really, there was a tiny, tiny little bleacher section. I don't, I had never really been in there before. There was a tiny bleacher section and basically Aside from that, they just let people stand around the glass, which was amazing because you could put your face up against the glass and bam, there was Rick Nash, there was Chris Kreider, there was, dare I say, Henrik Lundqvist. For any of you that are hockey fans, whether you're Rangers fans or not, you have to appreciate the beauty that is Henrik Lundqvist. I'm going to put a picture here for all of you who are not aware of what I'm talking about. Let's just take a moment of silence for Henrik Lundqvist. <sighs> okay. I hope you all enjoyed that. Anyway, it was a spectacular birthday for Jamie. So I'm just, you know, I wanted to take a little, little sidetrack from showing you the socks just to tell you about how sort of all of that came together perfectly. What I'm embarrassed to admit was that the only thing I had left to do on one of the two socks was Kitchener the damn toe closed. So I just, that was it. I had them ready for him and he was able to wear them and it was great. So that was one birthday sock pair finished. I also finished a second pair of birthday socks and you may have seen the finished pair on Instagram, but boom, here they are. These are my mom's birthday socks. These are amazing. Um, this actually, the, um, the variegated yarn is actually from Kayleen from Little Bean Loves. And I posted, oh God, Kayleen, now I can't remember already. Coastal Sunshine? Is that right? I'm going to double check and I will put the official um, colorway name in there for you. I had gotten this from Kayleen. I think this might have been one of my first purchases from her. And I knew full well that I wanted to do something for my mom because of this bright, fun green color, which she loves. So let me just make it official, even though I'm not going to put it on the sock blocker, but here's the other one. So mom's birthday socks are done. They are ready to send. Um, I had the luxury, sorry about that. I had the luxury of being able to use mom as a foot model when I was visiting my mom and dad down in South Carolina a few weeks ago. So once I got the one, I actually finished an entire sock while I was on, um, on vacation visiting them. So then I just had to come home and replicate the same thing for the second sock. And hopefully now I just need to plop them in a little socky sock bath, get them smelling nice and smelly pretty and send them on their way to mom. Um, basically my mom told me that clearly it's hot as you know what up here so obviously it is really not sock weather quite yet in South Carolina so I don't know that she is in any major rush to get these socks anyway but I will be sending them her way soon so can I take a sip of this I, I might as well take a sip of it now that I picked it up what I wanted to say is that clearly I'm in a place in my knitting life where I'm not making socks for myself right now. I'm just making socks for lots of other people. Um, and the last of those, this is another embarrassment. I have, and I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes, for my pen pal, Anna Kristen, from Iceland. By the way, last time I believe I said Ireland, and luckily I corrected myself on the screen, but I am not making that mistake again. 
for my lovely and fabulous Icelandic pen pal, Anna Kristen, I do have almost her socks done. As you can see, this one is done, minus the weaving in of the ends. This bad boy, all it needs is a heel candy. Would you get with the program and just knit the darn afterthought heel already? So, Anna Kristen, I am sorry, my friend, but that Rhinebeck sweater has been consuming. So uh, these socks, by the way, just as a quick reminder to anybody that may have missed it last time, I'm not going to take this out of the package, but they are, this is the You're So Foxy colorway from the Cozy Knitter. Um, it just so happened that my dear, dear friend, Jenny of the Lucky Jenny Knits podcast gifted me um, that set. I already had it, so I thought, how fun would it be to someday know that I would have matching socks with my fabulous Icelandic pen pal. So someday I am going to open that other set, and I'm going to knit them up for myself and send a picture to Anna Kristen so that she knows we're sock twins. So that is where we are. That's where we are in the land of all the socks. Okay. There is one last thing I wanted to tell you about because it is October and even though it's nine bazillion degrees here in some places on the East Coast, it is still all things pumpkin season has begun. So the other thing I wanted to tell you about that I did knit between the last time I saw you and now was an awesome pumpkin hat. I don't have the pumpkin hat to show you because I have already gifted it to its utterly adorable recipient. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh, here come doggies. Here come doggies. Hold the wine. Hold the wine, people. Here come all whoa, here come all the dogs. Okay, guys. No, 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 no. No, no. Oh boy. Clarence, no. Go sit down. Sit down. Sit. Addie, sit. We may have to stop this because we're gonna have an earthquake. I can sense it. Oh, there goes the light. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. Ah, oh, never a dull moment. I, I thought it was too good to be true that they were occupied so quietly downstairs. And then all of a sudden I heard boom, 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 boom. Kind of the, you know, dog slash elephant footsteps coming up the stairs. And I looked at the, um, I do have one light because our lighting in this room is terrible. So I just have one sort of. I don't know, whatever, whatever you call it, like a photography light up. And I, it's one of those things where you see it before it's about to happen. And, and I was like, yeah, that thing's going down. So anyway, sorry about that. But as I was saying, I did make, I'm trying to hide this here so that somebody doesn't knock it over. Um, I did make the most adorable little child sized pumpkin hat. And I have to share a picture of it with you guys because if you can get your hands on some worsted weight yarn in fabulous pumpkin-y colors, I by all means highly recommend the pattern. It was super easy. I actually, I started it at midnight on a Thursday night. I had it finished by, I think, the end of the night on Friday. It seriously took me like the better part maybe of one entire evening maybe and a little bit more than that so these were the colors that I used I'm sorry I don't have the ball bands but this is um what was this Ella Ray worsted I think if I'm wrong about that I will correct myself in the down bar um but this was really like these couldn't have been two more perfect pumpkin-y colors so I want to show you a picture I didn't I wasn't able to get a picture of little Presley wearing the hat again when we got together with our friends it was it was too hot this poor kid I'm I'm kind of nervous like I hope that she's going to be able to actually wear the hat before it gets to be super cold so um, anyway I'll go ahead and put in a picture here but the actual name of the hat oh my gosh Clarence you're going to knock this aren't you good good boy settling down it's actually called the pumpkin pack knit by Alicia Cram and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. The other thing I wanted to highlight, I did the knitted version of the pattern. There also is a crochet pattern in the little in the set that you get. Um, I personally liked the look of the knitted one better, but for those of you who are into crochet, I can only imagine considering how quickly the knitted one worked up for me. 
I would guess that the crochet one would work up even twice as fast. So anyway, go check that out. It's the Pumpkin Pack Knit by Alicia Cram. So that was amazing. All right. Okay. So I have a few more things that I want to talk to you guys about. During the last episode, Jamie and I spent a little bit of time talking about um, the Northwood Folk School in Minnesota. And if you recall, both of us took the opportunity to share um, some of the classes that we think. Hey, Clarence, you're going to lay down again? Lay down. Good boy. Thank you. We both took the opportunity to share some of the classes we would take if we could rent some sort of a RV and travel cross country to Minnesota and just camp out at this place for weeks on end. I shall remind everybody that yes, one of Jamie's classes that he wanted to take was the build your own casket class, which I still find to be incredibly morbid and kind of funny all at the same time. But um, what we had asked you to do when Jamie and I were talking to you all about this was to go ahead over to the Ravelry group. And I had put in a thread there that said, okay, you know, we each shared three classes, which of the classes would you think we would be interested in taking with us. And so many of you went on over and checked that out. I think there were 20 people who posted. There were definitely some takers for the casket class. I'm just going to put it out there or some interesting comments about that. Um, I don't think I've lost any viewers over it. So that's good. I'm glad that I, you know, Jamie didn't scare anybody away that, that permanently. Um, but anyway, what I had promised to give away was this adorable little Notions tin from the Sexy Knitter, um, and I'm not going to open it, but it is filled with tons of little adorable surprises, all kinds of little Notions and gadgets and tons of things. So I went ahead and using random number generator, I put in from, what do you call it, uh, that it would be through 20. And it ended up drawing, let me double check, make sure I had the number right. It, the random number generator chose number 15 out of those 20 entries. And that winner is Alta Lisa, who is from New York. And I actually, you know, I smile whenever anybody's number comes up, but I smiled particularly strong in this case because I actually two years ago got to meet Lisa at the Farm and Fiber Tour um, weekend knitting getaway that was organized by Sarah Pomegranate of the Yarns at Yinhu podcast. Um, Lisa and Lisa's family, I believe, um, they have a little Adirondack camp in the same exact town where Jamie and I have our little place up in Wilmington, New York. So we still haven't had the chance to meet up there yet, and I hope that that will still happen at some point. But Lisa, in the meantime, I'm ex super excited to send this little tin your way. Um, so I have two options for you. I know that last year I got to say hello to you at Rhinebeck, so I'm not sure if you're planning on coming to Rhinebeck again and you want me to just pack this in my suitcase and bring it with me and keep it on me and maybe we'll meet up at some point um, at the fairgrounds or I can just as easily pop it in an envelope and send it your way. So you reach out to me, send me a private message and let me know what you prefer. But congratulations, Lisa. I hope you'll like this little tin. It's actually really cute. And don't forget, the top is paper, paper in such a way that you can actually color it and to make your own colorway on top of your knitting notions tin. So very clever idea. All right, that is that. So now it's time to talk about the next giveaway. And this one is super exciting. And I have been, it has been everything that I could do not to want to almost um, film a separate like mini podcast to show this to you guys, because I had another very exciting thing happen, um, which was when the lovely Lorianne of the Arkansas Yarn Company, Arkansas Yarn Co., reached out to me. Lori reached out to me and said, hey, I'm an indie dyer. I dye yarn, and one of the things that I've been doing is dyeing yarn for um, kind of podcaster yarn, just to sort of, you know, recognize podcasters that she's been getting to know and whatnot. So she basically said, I would love to come up with a custom colorway for your podcast. Let me know, you know, give me some ideas of what to work with, what colors to work with, and then I'll see what I come up with. So I can't tell you how much time and thought I put in. I agonized over what I wanted to do because I... I 
everything I do usually has some kind of meaning to it. And, um, what I decided I wanted was to sort of represent like my favorite thing, which is coming home at the end of the day and spending time with Jamie and the dogs, you know, work is hard as we all know. And I am just very thankful that I, especially given everything, um, you know, we went through with Jamie within the last couple of years. I'm just thankful that I can come home and just spend time with the people that I love and the puppies that I love. So I asked Jamie what his, I kind of knew what he was going to say, but I confirmed, shall we say, that Jamie's favorite color is kind of like a, like a foresty green, like a mossy green. I, as you may remember, always have trouble determining a favorite color, but I am a fan of like sort of a mustardy yellow, I, especially this time of year. That's a, I love that color. It gets me every time. I do love it. So then, I, so in my mind, I had the green sort of representing Jamie, the, the mustardy yellow representing me. And then of course I told Lori, I said, well, I said, and so here's two colors for you and do me a favor and throw in a black lab and a yellow lab. And then I think you'll have my pause for stitches skein pretty nailed down. So that is what she did. And this, my friends, is what she came up with. I love it so, so, so very much. I'm trying to find like the best. It's really hard. Like if you turn it all the different ways you see so many different peaks of the colors coming out but oh my goodness it is absolutely adorable i love it um here is Lori's card Lori ann helberg she is the dyer behind the fabulous arkansas yarn company yarn and i love it and not only did she send me one skein for me but because she's such a generous kind of gal she sent two, one for me and one for one of you guys. So again, I can't thank you enough, Lori. This is so beautiful. And it was so thoughtful of you to think of me. And I really, you know, I'm definitely going to not only think about, you know, what I love in my family when I'm working with this, when I decide what to make with it, I haven't decided yet. Um, but I definitely will think of you and I will think of just how awesome everybody in this whole fiber community is because, you know, just, I don't know. It's nice every once in a while to get a little surprise like this. So it's lots of fun. So anyway, thank you so much. Definitely go on, go on over, please. And check out Lori shop. She is doing a lot of really cool stuff. She's done several colorways for other podcasters. I know she recently did one for, um, Levi of the um, WTF Knitting Podcast. I think she did one for Kay, the Crazy Sock Lady Podcast. Um, and back to Levi for a second, I thought this was really clever and actually it leads me to how I'm going to give away the skein for you. Um, so Levi had actually noticed that being that it is the Arkansas Yarn Company and Little Rock, right, is the capital of Arkansas, I believe. And he pointed out that instead of sort of typical skeins, Lori sends you these little rocks. So she's kind of got her little Arkansas rocks, which is pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I don't have the heart to open this up. It's way too pretty. I'm not going to mess with it, but thank you again, Lori. And so speaking of Arkansas, obviously I am not, you know, here I, I live in New Jersey. We have a small place in New York. So we travel back and forth between those two states quite frequently. Aside from that, there are only a handful of other states that I have actually visited. So when I got to thinking about what little prompt I could give you guys for this giveaway, for this skein of Lori's yarn, I was thinking that in honor of the state of Arkansas, what I'm going to ask you guys to do, and this time, by the way, it's going to be a YouTube entry. Okay, not you don't have to head on over to Ravelry and find the thread and all that. Go ahead and just post down here in the YouTube comments. Here's what I want to know. I want to know if you, it doesn't matter if you already live in the United States or if you're from outside of the United States, but if you were to be traveling in the USA, what state would you like to travel to and why? So that's what I'm going to tell you. I will tell you that I think, and I think I speak for Jamie and me when I say this, um, 
we probably, although we there are a ton of states we have not been to, we have always talked about going to Wyoming because we would love to go to Jackson Hole. Um, Jamie has always wanted to try the fly fishing there. And I just think the landscape itself in that area looks absolutely amazing. So, you know, that would be my entry if I was allowed to enter my own contest, which is often tempting because I got to tell you, there's a small part of me that wouldn't mind keeping both of these skeins for myself, but I'm not going to do that because that's, that would be breaking the rules sort of, I think, I don't know. But anyway, so go please down below, tell me what state you would like to visit and why. And, um, when I film the next episode, I will go ahead and put in all the names into a hat and pick one out and send that amazing Arkansas yarn your way. So thanks again, Lori, for that wonderful surprise. I really, really appreciate it very much. All right. I think the only other couple things I have left are two, two announcement-y kinds of things. And then I do have two more skeins of yarn to show you. And I have to save them to the end because they're pretty much jaw-dropping and amazing. So I'm definitely going to do that. Okay. So anyway, for those of you, and I'll try and keep this short because not everybody that might be watching is participating in this, certainly. Uh, but for those of you who are partnered up and involved in the Pen Pal Cal that I am co-hosting with my good buddy, Jenny, um, of the Lucky Jenny Knits podcast, hi Clarence, um, we basically, if you aren't aware of this, which I think everybody is, we had extended the first of the three, what we called Cal petitions, uh, which was the sock Cal petition. We are extending that to the very, very end of the Cal. So if, so if you are still knitting away on socks for yourself or for anybody else for that matter, please keep knitting away because that is going to continue until the end of December when the Cal is officially over. So that's that. But we had said that there were going to be three Cal petitions and the way we had plotted it out, I believe the second one should have technically started on October 1st. So we're a few days behind, but Jenny and I had to put our heads together. Um, actually just last night, we put our heads together over the phone. We finalized some of the details and some of you may have already seen this um, in L the Lucky Jenny Knits podcast group thread over in Ravelry. She already put up a little explanation of what the second Cal petition is going to be. But really quickly, let me summarize that for those of you who are watching and are participating. Okay, so here is what it is. It is called the Partner's Choice Cal Petition. What that means is that you are going to contact, you and your uh, pen pal will contact one another and you guys get to choose what this cal is going to be about for the two of you. Okay. Again, this cal for us was all about building friendships. So one of the things we've been trying to think of is what are some ways we can kind of get people to continue to talk and connect and, you know, find things that they have in common and whatnot. So what we ask that you do is for you and your partner to decide what the focus of your knitting or crocheting or your making or whatevering is going to be for this um, petition, cow petition. Um, and it, it really could be anything. You might both decide to knit a sweater. You might both decide to knit a shawl. You might both decide that you are going to do some charity knitting, which you might want to keep in mind because I'm about to tell you one possible opportunity that you could double dip with for that. Um, you might even decide you both want to try something new for the first time so that you can support one another through the process. So for example, maybe neither of you have done fair aisle knitting, but it's something that you both feel like you're ready to try. Maybe you could choose um, the same fair aisle hat project and work on that together and kind of coach each other through it. So again, hopefully those examples give you the gist of what we're talking about. But that is the second Cal Petition. It's the Partner's Choice Cal Petition. And we hope that you guys come up with some fun ideas for that. And Jenny has set up not only a chatter thread, but also a finished objects thread in her Ravelry podcast group. Um, since the sock one was in mine, we decided to put the next one in Jenny's. So go ahead on over there and check out the details for that in case you missed anything that I just said. All right. Oh, and one other thing. 
because we know that there's going to be a lot of variety here, one thing we decided in terms of the point earning is that any projects that if you decide to work on things that are under 100 grams of yarn for the project, that would earn you five points. But if you work on anything that's more than that, that would earn you 10 points. Who knows? Does that make sense? We decided it sounded good, so we're just going to go with it. Um, and we hope you'll have fun with that too. Okay, speaking of another opportunity. So, as you may recall, over the summer, the another little group of podcasters that I am involved with, which is known as the Slow Ass, sorry, Slow Ass Knitters Group, that is a dollar sign, dollar sign, knitters, we are doing something for the month of October and we wanted to, instead of necessarily having um, sort of a knit along that is driven by earning prizes or like contest like in nature or anything like that, we wanted to actually do a knit along that would do some good. And so being that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we always see lots of really wonderful things going on to raise awareness about breast cancer and um, to honor those who certainly have lost their lives to breast cancer. Um, and there are certainly people that are fighting that battle every day. Um, one of the things, one of the wonderful organizations that's come out of um, this whole breast cancer world is something called the, um, let me just make sure I'm saying it correctly. It's www.knittedknockers.org. And some of you may be aware of this. I'm trying to remember which audio podcast. Oh gosh, I'll put it up there on the screen when I think of it. But I know the very first time I heard of this amazing, amazing charity project um, referred to as knitted knockers. It was definitely on an audio podcast that I, two knit lit, chi two knit lit chicks. I'm pretty certain that's who it was. Um, I believe they even have a knockers retreat that they host. Um, so they have done a lot of amazing things, but those of us that are a part of the slow ass knitters group, we actually, um, we decided that we wanted to do a charity knit along. So we basically are trying to raise awareness of this organization that you can work, work with and actually create, just as it says, knitted knockers that um, women who have had mastectomies can actually use as an alternative to implants. So what I just wanted to show you very quickly is that the easiest way that you can get what you need to kind of jump on board with this amazing project is to um, go on over to Craftsy and they actually sell a kit. It's the, they call it their Knitted Knockers Project Kit. I'm just gonna show you what the um, cover of the pattern looks like because now you actually get to see what a knitted knocker looks like. It's, it really is pretty amazing if you think about it. Um, one thing that's important to know, and if you go to the website, and by the way, Lynn um, of the Sunshine and Bubblegum podcast went ahead and put some great information in our um, Slow Ass Knitters group thread that she opened up for this particular um, charity knit along. She has a bunch of links in there. She has a link to the Knitted Knockers um, actual organization. She has the link to Craftsy, so you can just click right on over there and go ahead and get the kit. Um, it was not expensive at all. The reason I went ahead and I just went with the kit is because one of the things that they are very particular about is the type of yarn that you actually use um, when you are making or knitting a knocker. Okay, um, as you can probably imagine, it has to be yarn that is obviously durable, washable, and something that's not going to um, bother people as it rubs up and is going to be so close to their skin. Um, so this, um, the yarn that they use actually that they give you in their kit is um, cloudborne fibers. It's their um, Pima Cotton DK. Now, I wanted to point out, you can get it in all kinds of different colors. Um, even right on the back, I had seen on here, I'm pretty certain that's where I read it. Yep. It actually says that the most requests that they get from women, um, for knockers are for neutral colors. Blah, 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 blah. 
But then it says, if you get bored with the flesh tones, by all means, make a creative bright pair. If you wish, we get requests for those too, with a little smiley face. So I went ahead and I picked a really pretty baby blue because I still thought that was something kind of light colored. And I, I want to take a moment to, you know, sort of share something with all of you because when I'm going to be knitting these knockers, I wanted to have in mind a very special person. Um, that I wanted to honor while doing so. And that's Jamie's sister, Helen, who we lost several years ago now. Um, and I just wanted to show you a picture of Helen because she is one of by far the most beautiful people I have ever known in my life. And if there's anybody who would have rocked knitted knockers, it would absolutely have been Jamie's sister, Helen. Um, and I do believe she would not have wanted a neutral colored pair. I think she would have wanted something a little bit fun, a little bit spunky. Um, but she is just, just a wonderful person to think about, um, when I'm actually going to be starting and working on this project, which I hope to cast on very soon. My goal will definitely be to have a pair of knockers done by the end of October so that I can send them off to the Knitted Knockers Foundation in Washington. Um, and I hope that you guys will consider going on over to our thread um, in the Slow Ass Knitters group over on Ravelry and checking that out because, again, we are definitely going to come up. We already have pretty much our idea for our next knit along that is not going to be charity in nature. But uh, for now, we thought that the month of October, it might be a good time to do something for others. So thank you for considering that. Okay, enough about the knockers. One last thing that I wanted to show you guys is I haven't really done much show and tell lately. So I have to show, I have to do show and tell with this. And it is such a wonderful way to celebrate and end this podcast because I, I don't know, I was, I was on Instagram and I saw that Amy of the Periscoping Sisters and her beautiful yarn dyingness was going to be doing something called the Sexy Sips Sock Club. I saw that, I saw it and I'm like, that sounds fun. I have no idea what it means, but I went and checked it out. And what she was doing is she has a three month sock club that basically, um, she's going to be sending you colorways that are, that are inspired by really super fun cocktails. I, I'm like, that is the best idea I've ever heard. Seriously. Um, so right away. I jumped on Etsy. I was able to get a spot in the sock club. And so far, Amy has not disappointed. I have not done anything with the yarn yet, but I do have two out of the three months worth of skeins to show you. So let me do that real quick. The very first one that she sent was called Cougar Bait. All right. So let me show you. Look at that. Oh my God. Look at that pink. It is amazing. By the way, I also love Amy's tags so much. They are so, the lettering on them is so much fun and her logo is adorable. Um, but look at that. So here's how this works. When she sends you the skein of yarn, she also sends you a matching cocktail recipe for that colorway name yarn. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So here's that. That was my cougar bait yarn. If I wanted to make myself a cougar bait cocktail while I was knitting on this yarn, I could go ahead and do so. I got to tell you, though, this one's got a lot of ingredients, most of, eh, I would say half of which we have in the house, some things we have to go and get. So that's one of the reasons I haven't explored this one yet. The second installment, however, I believe if I wanted to, I could go downstairs right now and make myself one of these. And the second one, oh my gosh. Here we go. You won't be able to see the name, but I'll tell you what it is and I'll put it on the bottom. It's called Sex in the Driveway. How awesome is that? So yes, I do believe I have peach schnapps, blue cure. I never know how to say that word. Curacao and vodka. I have vodka and rum. So I guess I've even got options there. Set. You know what's really sad about this list is the one thing on there that I'm... <laughs> I might not have is the Sprite. What? Seriously, that does not speak well for Jamie and me, does it? 
But anyway, oh my gosh, without any further ado, I present to you Sex on the Driveway because what do you not love about that? Oh my gosh, how fun is that? That green, Amy, is amazing. That is really, really pretty. So it is with that in mind, with those two fabulous cocktails, the Cougar Bait and the Sex on the Driveway, that I am going to say cheers to all of you. Wish you a lovely evening and a lovely weekend because tomorrow is Friday, people. I am going to go downstairs because I do believe it is just about time for that puck to drop. And look at that. Sissy came up just in time to say hello to everybody. Um, right, girl? Oh, my God. They're panting. When, when are my dogs ever panting at the beginning of October? It's so sad. This is usually the time of year that they're, like, already starting to snuggle on and fight over the, uh, the rug down in the living room. Oh, well. I keep promising them this heat is going to break soon. Let's hope. Let's hope it does. So anyway, you guys, Rhinebeck is coming. I hope, hope, hope to see so many of you there. Um, if you are going, please stop by the podcast or meet up on the hill on Saturday afternoon. I will have tic-tac-toe boards to hand out and I will have pins as we'll pause some pause for stitches, a uh, little pause for stitches podcast swag. Just, just pins. I'm sorry, guys. Nothing super fancy, but at least something um, that I can kind of give you as a token of my appreciation. And thanks for spending time with me when I put up these crazy episodes. So all that said, I guess that's it. The only thing left for me to say is that no matter what you're doing for the rest of this week and this weekend, I hope you definitely take the time out to pause for those stitches and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.